Hey everybody, so uh, happy holidays everybody. Merry Christmas, happy Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, uh, if there's something in there, uh, I forgot, then it is what it is, sorry. Uh, so yeah, this is after Christmas, but before New Year's, I've got a New Year's gig, hence the, uh, you see the music on the background there, and I've got, actually I bought a, uh, right back there you see a, it's a stand pack, it's got a stand, a mic, and a cord and stuff, because the band that I'm about to play with, apparently they saw fit to uh, not include that shit. And they said, hey, by the way, bring your mic and stuff. And I'm like, I can't bring this mic because this is a studio mic. And if I do, the the, the sensor is so, it just it picks up everything around it. It's not going to do for live sound. So anyway, that's a thing. Um, this has also been a car parts warehouse for, you know, a couple of months. So, so here's what I'm going to go into. This is an op-ed, right? Opinion editorial. And this is going to be about um, New Edge Mustangs. Uh, that's 99 to 04 Mustangs. And the reason I say that is because on November 8th, I myself purchased one. It was a convertible. Still is a convertible, technically. Um, and I've spent a lot of money and a lot of time on that car. Uh, now, you know, there's a junkyard near me that's got a shitload of those things in the yard. So, I've been fortunate on that. But, um, the, I've, there's a few parts that are discontinued by Ford, and there are a few things that I didn't know about these cars uh, that... I, th I, th I feel like I need to 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 let people know about. Now again, this is opinion editorial. Feel free to blast me if you want to. Don't care. And this is not why my channel exists anyway. But this is something that I'm doing. Um, I use the money that I I made uh, this past year that I hadn't already spent on instruments and and music and stuff is uh, for this car. And the reason I'm going to write it off as a tax deduction is because this is my transportation to and from my gigs. I'm giving my daughter. Uh, my other car, my last car that I have, um, which is kind of why this whole thing came about. So, um, let's get into it. So, New Edge Mustangs, I didn't know that they technically have the same chassis design, I believe, as the Fox Bodies. So, the Fox Bodies, uh, the 79 to 93, and then you have the SN95s, which are the 94 to 98. And then you have the new edge body style, which is the more square, you know, but they came, they had the, the, uh, I like the taillights anyway, that's kind of cool, but they're more square, all right? And then you had the, when they went back to the retro look of the 05s and up. Okay, so that's where mine is. It's a new edge Mustang. Look at Derek Barron, B-A-R-A-N, D-E-R-E-K, B-A-R-A-N Productions, and he's got a nice, like, he's been taking care of this car and has a shitload of money to put into it, uh, New Edge Mustang, I don't remember the year, but he's got a really rare color on it. It's like Atlantic Blue or something like that. Um, I started watching his channel because I was interested in New Edge, and uh, when I was trying to buy a Fox body, actually, but they were just, they're too expensive. So here's a couple of things that I'm going to go into. One, I think that the New Edge is the new Fox body. And let me explain this. I may have to, I'm going to bring this a little bit closer and hope that it stays. Uh, my boom is garbage, sorry. I'll try to get a little bit there. All right, so. Here's my thought on this. The New Edge Mustang, the 99-04s, are this generation's Fox Body. And what I mean by that is the Fox Body Mustangs back a couple of years ago, a few years ago, maybe five, maybe even close to ten, uh, they were seen as vehicles, and not in the, 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 the motor vehicle sense, but in a vehicle for some other thing. This is really hard to explain. How in the hell am I going to put this? Uh, so, you say your French fry is a vehicle for the ketchup to enter your mouth, kind of thing. That's that's the that's kind of what I'm trying to get across. And what those were is a vehicle for just huge ass engines and bulletproof transmissions to get down a drag strip, and that's all they were. Uh, most of the time, people were gutting them uh, and just throwing these big ass engines in them and setting them down, and then. People like me were looking for them, and then they found them in those in that condition, maybe with another motor thrown in just to sell the damn thing, and it's complete garbage, and they want a shitload for them. Uh, the new edge now is where the Fox bodies were a few years ago. You can find them, and you can find them in okay shape, uh, and then spend a little bit of money and fix them up, and you'll be fine. And that's where that's where I found mine. I got mine for an okay price. 
Uh, probably wasn't the best, but the re- the transmission had been rebuilt by somebody that knows what they're doing, and every seal on the car that was leaking had been replaced, and there was a bunch of them, because it had been sitting on a farm. It was practically a farm find before I got it. And uh, so, knowing that, including the rear main seal, which is a pain in the ass, and I'm glad that was replaced, uh, that's a load off my mind. You know, oil pan, valve covers, uh, rear main... The uh, transmission pan gasket, all that shit's been replaced, and I'm cool with it. Uh, may I? I think maybe the in the intake and the head gaskets have been. Re- I don't know about the head gasket for sure. I've been up under the car and I've looked, and maybe the head gasket is. Eh. But the intake is, I'm pretty sure, has been replaced. So that's cool too, because they Ford sought in their infinite wisdom to put a plastic intake on these vehicles on the 4.6 liter two valve and I'm pretty sure the Mountaineer that I have is a three valve and it's the same damn way plastic intakes what the fuck Ford anyway so anyway New Edge is in the category that Fox bodies were about five ten years ago nobody gives a shit much about them you can find them and you can you can you know fix them up like I'm doing and make them into a really neat little car uh, so that's what I'm doing with mine um so that's one of the op-ed parts about this. The other thing is there's a list of shit about these cars you need to know if you're going in to buy a new Edge. And I didn't know these things because I didn't, I didn't know what to look for. You have to know the keywords to look in Google for. And then once you find it, you're like, holy shit. So um, I've got a list here of shit, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to end up looking down at it. Where the hell are you? Yeah. So I've got a list of, of uh, five things on the new Edge. Now, I didn't... I actually didn't have to struggle to come up with these, nor did I try to limit it down to five. This is, these are the top five biggies, and then while I was going through the car and repairing shit, these are the first things that I thought of. I'm like, this is going in a video. So here it is. All right. Uh, these are in no particular order of importance, except maybe the last one. The last one is going to be like the, the, the coup de grace, the coup de gras of everything. It's going to be the holy shit Ford Y. Um, one. The throttle cables on these things are unusually long. I thought maybe it was just mine, and the guy that did the repairs on it just put a bad throttle cable on it and something that was too big. No. The throttle cables on these things have about that much, too much slack. Yeah, I'm looking at that, yeah. It's about right. Maybe a little bit more, yeah. So that means that the gas pedal is closer to the floor than the brake by a lot. So you don't have much pedal there. So what I did was I shortened that bastard. Now, I didn't clip anything. All I did, basically, was I shortened the distance between the the pedal itself and the end of the cable. So the pedal end would be right here, and the end of the cable would be right here. So, pretty sure I got that right. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's on the... I don't know. I, I'd have to. I'd really have to get under the car to get the thing. Bottom line is, it brought the pedal up. So maybe it's between the pedal and the wall. No, because it goes up. So yeah, this is what it was. The pedal, the cable runs through the bottom of the pedal, right? So the pedal would be down here, pressing up against the bottom of it, and you'd press down on it. Well, I lifted the pedal up a little bit and put a little, this plastic spacer on it, basically. Just put it over there and crimped it on, and now I've got that area. It's only about that like that. But it makes a hell of a difference in throttle response, believe me. So that's the first thing. Really, guys? Seriously. So that's the first thing. Um, the second thing is, is in my car in particular, this is a 2000 GT. I guess I should have said that. It's a 2000 Mustang GT convertible. Um, in this particular vehicle, um, and in I'm guessing probably not in 2001s, but maybe even up to 2002. I'm not 100% sure when these came, but it had a tape deck. There was a single den, about like that. And then down below it, an offset in a little bit where the gear shift is, they had a CD player, also a single den. What the fuck? So... When I went to replace everything, I had to put, I put a, I didn't put a CD player in because I don't listen to CDs anymore. I'm a musician. I actually don't listen to that much music. And when I do, I listen to it streamed from my phone on my newer vehicles. So I got a, a, a digital media receiver, which are cheap as shit. You can get a really good one for like 70 bucks. And I got mine for cheaper than that. And it still sounds good. Uh, so I put it in, and then I still had this fucking hole where the CD player was, because I wasn't going to leave that damn thing in there. It's antiquated. It's 20 fucking years old. It's terrible. 
So I took it out. I had to get a CD player delete, and that cost me another 26 bucks. So if you really want to add the 26 into the cost of the digital media receiver, I spent about 80 bucks on that shit. Still less than about $250, $300 that my brother and I used to spend on car stereos with CD players when we used to do our amplifiers and shit. So there you go. Um, in particular with this vehicle, here's one that I didn't write down, but as it as it pertains to the stereo itself, um, the in the convertibles, the speakers are in the rear deck, right? Not the deck, because there is no deck. There's a deck between the back seats and the convertible top, but you can't, it's, that's where the convertible top ends up going, right? So you can't have anything right there. So they're in right here beside the passengers, right? Is that thing fuzzy as fuck or is it just me? I don't know. Eh, looks a little fuzzy. It may be right. Anyway, so it's in the, it's in the, beside the, the passengers in the rear. Well, the only thing they have holding these speakers in is just a metal frame. And it's a 5x7, which is not a very big... I mean, it's about like, I guess... Eh, having a hard time lining it up. Maybe about like that. Yeah, it's about right. Not a very big one. It's not a 6x9. It doesn't give a lot of bass response. But it's just free-floating. There's no cabinet in there. It's just literally you mount the speaker to a bracket. And it's just free-floating in there. What the fuck, Ford? Luckily, I put boom mats in there, and you can get boom mats anywhere. And I put boom mats all the way around when I replaced the speakers for this thing. So that's a thing. Um, so that was all in the tape deck, CD deck thing. I'm just going to lump that all into that number two category. All right, the number three thing was the, the odometer. And this is a big problem. All of these things are, are common with these cars. Okay, I'm, this is not just my personal experience. It is my personal experience. But the reason I was able to find how to fix some of this shit is because I went online and saw so many people having problems. Okay? The odometer. The digital odometer in the vehicle. Apparently, there, there's a section of nine solder joints that any number of them could be fucked up and cold soldered. Cold soldered means it's not going to make a good connection for long and it desolders itself from the board and then you don't have an odometer anymore. Fuck, guys. So... I had to get in with my shitty soldering pen that I've had from, damn, like, the year 92 and solder these damn things on. And so I did it, and it works better now, but shit, Ford, really? Um, and then the the number two on, on the severity scale is the window brackets for these fucking cars. So Ford sought in their infinite wisdom to cheapen out on the window brackets... And I imagine you have a window. Let me try to put it up. I've, I've, I've got OBS pulled up on the side over here so I can so I can get kind of a gauge. All right, so there's your window. Now, there are three different locations for these window brackets. Let's say this is the rear of the vehicle here. There's one right here. And there's one in the middle. Those two attach to the, the scissor lift, the, the guide, the window guide. All right, window regulator is what they call it. And then at the front here is just a stop. All right, so there are three separate metal brackets that are glued onto the actual glass window. They're glued. I shit you not, they're glued. And not very well. Now, the problem is here in the back, you have a bracket. We'll say it's a square bracket, about like that. Now, the square bracket, the stop for it that tells it you don't go up any further, is on the back of the bracket, right there near the back of the window. All right? Where over here, toward this side, there's a hole. We'll make a hole like that. Look at that. Now that hole is held on by a rivet. All right, that that this part of the bracket, and that's all the bracket, is held on to the regulator by a rivet. One rivet, and that's it. So what happens when this side that has the stop hits that stop, and this wants to keep going? Oh, it's going to do that, and the window's going to want to go up straight because it doesn't have a choice, and you're going to break the seal on that bracket from the window, and the window's going to come unglued from that shit. This is a common, common problem with these with these new edge. All right, and so what I did is I took this area right here, and around that rivet, you drill two holes in, in that bracket and in the window regulator guide that's behind it, and you put two three-millimeter bolts in that, put the nuts on it, 
and you tighten that bitch down and you completely take that pivot point out of it. Take it completely out. So yeah, anyway, once you once you have that bracket and you take that pivot point out because you put two more screws in the bastard, just two tiny screws, that's all it takes. Screws and nuts and tighten that bitch down. And now, oh look, it can't pivot because it's got more than... Eh, it holds on thus far. With E6000 glue, I think, is what I end up using on one side. I use Gorilla Glue Epoxy on the other. So I don't know, we'll see. Here's the bitch about that also is that if you go to, hell, I find mine on walmart.com just because I've been looking at the shit. If you go online and you find these windows, instead of the three individual brackets, it's one continuous bracket all the way down because they fucking figured it out. So if I have any issues with that from now on, I'm definitely just going to go and get the new damn window, especially since I've been through everything with this. Oh, and by the way, if you're going to be taking that window out, you're going to have to drill the rivets out. And you're not going to be able to get new rivets in with just a normal rivet gun. It takes a special rivet gun with a long-ass nose on it. And it's a very expensive tool to get, and it's a very big-ass rivet. So you're better off just taking a quarter-inch by 20 thread, real short, uh, bolt and nut, and putting that bitch in there. If, if everything is good on your window and nothing's leaking, it shouldn't rust. Especially if you put your vapor barrier up between your interior panel and your door, you should be fine. Just saying. So anyway... That's that. Um, the last thing, and this I cannot stress enough. Hang on, I need a drink. Oh my god. The interior on these cars are fucking atrocious. They're terrible. I had to go through this car. Now, mind you, some monkey got a hold of this shit before I did, and I guess... At some point, they either got it repoed or they just wanted to sell it real quick. So they yanked their stereo out and demolished that bezel in front of the tape player and CD player into like three pieces. And um, I think they had custom gauges in it that they had to rip out real quick. So they fucked that bezel up too. And then the uh, the door over here on the driver's side where all the window switches and shit, that insert panel... It, had, it was put in by drywall screws that they just fucking screwed into the door because they fucked up the clip because they didn't bother to figure out how the shit came off without breaking the shit. And then on the rear panels where the speakers were that I told you I replaced, those fucking grills were put on from the factory. They were, they were plastic welded on. They had three of these little things, or maybe four, I think it was three, like that. And they'd each go through these little holes, and they'd stick in about that far. You can see that, right? Where's Okay, that far. Right there. And what they would do is they would take a, a tool and melt this all the way down to where it made a big mushroom flat spot right there at that hole. And, and that would secure it in. It was permanently affixed. I don't know why they didn't do what they did with the door panels and just make holes. For fuck's sake, just make holes. There was no need in that. It was stupid. But that's what they did. And then these motherfuckers that had the car before me ripped those bastards off and then put them in with drywall screws. So I had to order new speaker grills because you just you have to get the new panels otherwise. So I was able to find the grills for like 30 bucks, and I'm good on that. But everything that I've replaced and fixed, and I've fixed a lot of things, including the, the defroster things here in the, the front of the car, the driver and passenger side defroster, that's, they're a lot closer here than they are. They're on opposite sides of the dashboard of the vehicle right there at the windshield. They blow on the, the driver and passenger side windows. Those things are just fucking just free floating because they're pieces of shit and they break really fucking easy. The interior of these New Edge Mustangs are made with fucking, like, glass. Not even glass. Like, candy glass. Like, candy rock glass. That shit just... Oh, God, it's gone. It's fucked. That's what they're made of. It's terrible. The interior of these cars is fucking horrible. So keep that in mind. If you've got a if you've got a new edge, and my seats are fucked too. I mean, I got leather seats, man, and I had to put seat covers on them as soon as I got it because they're trashed. Um, and that's something I'm gonna have to deal with long term. I've got to find really good seat covers to put in there. That's gonna cost me a few hundred bucks to get really good seat covers because it's gonna cost me about a grand to get the really nice seat covers that I really want in there, which are like the Mach One or or Cobras, just because they look really cool. So, yeah, um, the interior of this car, I'd say, is its Achilles heel. Luckily, the engine and the tranny are practically fucking indestructible. I mean, 
if you've ever gone online and seen any of these junkyard rescue shits where they go in and they just find an old car and they go, well, fuck, we can just, you know, pour transmission fluid down the spark plug hole and get that fucking motor going and then just plug that shit up with a spark plug if it's running or not, fuck it, and then pour gas down the thing and boom, oh, look at the explosion and fuck, we got it running, let's go. Same thing with this Mustang. You could practically do the same thing. Now, it's electronic fuel injection and it's got one coil for each plug. So you got eight coil on plugs, COPs they call them, coil on plugs. That's a pain in the ass because if you ever have an ignition problem, you got eight motherfuckers. And you might as well just replace all of them. I found a set online for like 70 bucks to replace the ones that uh, came in it when I bought it. Now, I'm not convinced anything was truly wrong with them, but I wanted to eliminate them. Now, I kept them just in case because the Mountaineer that I have also has a 4.6 liter and it'll be nice to have some good coil packs just kind of laying around. So, yeah, like I said, the, the engine and the tranny are the good news. Um, now, I can't speak from the standpoint of, of the longevity of the automatic transmissions, because I got an automatic. I wanted a stick. I don't want to hear any shit from everybody. Oh, you bought a muscle car and got an automatic, you fucker. Man. It's what came with it, and it was rebuilt. It was freshly rebuilt, and I was looking for something that I could drive home that day, not something that I had to trailer, because I didn't have a way to get it here, and I didn't want to pay the money for the tow truck. I've sunk all that money into the car, all right? So And that's what I wanted to do. And I've been driving it off and on. It's in the garage right now because I've got to adjust the rear quarters, the rear quarter windows, out just a little bit. Because I can still fit a little piece of receipt paper in between the, the passenger or the driver's side window and the quarter window that comes up to meet it when you close the door right there under the convertible top. Just a little bit, just that little bit. Now, is it leaking? No, it's not leaking. But I also haven't had it outside under like a turd floater condition, you know, huge-ass monsoon. I haven't had it there, so we'll see. Um, once I do that, and that should just take me a few hours, hopefully. I'm going to work on it either tomorrow or uh, Monday. But I got a gig Monday night, which is a New Year's Eve gig. And that's going to be long as fuck, so I'd rather sleep a shitload that day so that I'm not falling asleep, because the gig's until 1. And if I know any of these motherfuckers, they're going to want to go until 2. So, and that's already a four and a half hour gig, plus the setup. So, I mean, I'm looking at five, six hours that night. So, the good news is, is that, um, there were a few issues with the car, um, and I'll go ahead and let's see if I can go into some of the shit that I've replaced. Um, just to let you guys know. I know this is turning into a 30-minute video. And for those of you who are tuning in for uh, for video games and you're not seeing it, I apologize. I really do. Um, but, uh, but this is something I wanted to get out because I went to uh, YouTube and stuff to find out how to put my convertible top on that was trashed. I had to replace that. And I still didn't get it 100% right, but it's like I said, it's not leaking, so... I'll go back in the spring and when it gets warmer and I'll I'll fix it for reals like IRL. Uh but uh for right now, let me let me give you a list and this is not the complete list. This is what I've already put down um and then I've done other shit. So I'll go over the shit that I've already done after I wrote this list. Um okay. So here's what we've got. Uh, after two weeks having the car, and that's, like I said, it was a convertible, and the convertible top was trash, so I parked it in the garage immediately and had to move my wife's 2016 Charger out of there, which pained me a lot to do that, because we're trying to keep that car in really good shape. Um, but it is what we had to do. It was a convertible. I didn't want to ruin the, the interior any more than it already was from Ford and from sitting on the farm for so many fucking years. So here's what I got done within two weeks. Um, and some of this was just investigative, and some of it when I found it, when I was investigating some of it, I was pretty sure I knew what was going on, but I found something else, which found something else, which is why it took so damn long. I didn't just look at it and go, oh, well, that's the problem. Let's go fix that. It, that would have been cherry. I would have been able to get everything out of the way in like a week. But as I was working on things, I found something else while I was there that I had to fix. So it just kept compounding. Uh, so this is what I got done. Uh, idler pulley and bolt. 
Uh, the Adler Pulley I was able to get at like Advanced Auto Parts, which is my go-to. They're just closer and they're there, but I've gotten stuff from AutoZone too. I'm not biased. There are no O'Reilly's super close to me, but if they had the part, I'd go to them. I don't care. And I try to support local when I can, even though they're a national chain. They're still a local store instead of online. But sometimes the price is just way too good to pass up. Uh, but anyway, I'll go into that later. Uh, idler pulley and bolt replaced. Idler pulley's bolt discontinued. Thanks, Ford. Yeah, they fucking totally did that. I actually found it online at Walmart.com. I replaced it with an, a grade 8 bolt. I think I want to say it's 12 millimeter head, but it may be a 12 millimeter body. 12 millimeter body. I don't remember. But anyway, you can go to, to uh, Home Depot or Lowe's or Menards if you're up north uh, and get just a grade 8 bolt, and I got some stainless steel washers behind it, and put that fucking idler pulley on there. No big deal. I haven't found anything wobbling yet. Nothing's good. or uh, Everything's good. Nothing's bad. Everything's right where it should be and functioning as it should. But I've got that idler pulley bolt in the glove box ready to replace just in case something happens. The grade 8 should hold though. It should be fine. This thing was only pushing like 260 at the crank from factory. Less than that at the wheels. I may have that reversed though. So anyway, idler pulley and bolt. Uh, fog lamps. The fog lamps were fucked, so I fixed those. Um, interior lamps. The interior lamps on the convertible, you have the rear view mirror, and underneath it, underneath it are your two little bulbs, and the fixtures for those things are fucked. So I've, I've still got to go in there and kind of fix those, but they're working right now, so I just kind of left it alone. I'll tweak them later. I'm, I'm really bad about fixing shit until it's broken, and I really don't want to do that with this car. I really want to try to do it the right way, and just, okay, it's working until it stops working. I'm done with it. You know? Um, the differential fluid, I checked it and topped it off, uh, and I'll, I'll get back to this in a minute. So I went in and checked it, and I was like, I found out that it's 75W140 synthetic. So I got a couple of, I got like four quarts of the shit, and filled it up to max. I was getting a groan out of the rear end, and that didn't really fix it. So I had to do more investigation on that later, and I'll tell you about that. Um... Convertible top hydraulic motor serviced and repaired. The hydraulic tops for these Fords, a lot of them should be, it should use like Dexron 3 Mercon automatic transmission fluid, and you fill it, and it fills the lines. Now, my lines are leaking uh, right there at the cylinders, so I've got to have those replaced. I may even have to replace the cylinders. I'm not 100% sure. I've got to check on that. Um, but as of right now, the top's on it, and it's getting cold. You know, it's fucking December. It's practically January. So I'm going to wait until it gets warm before I even start fucking with that. That way, if I have to go with the top down a little bit, I can do that. So I'm waiting on that. Everything's good. Everything, it still works. It, it moves up and down if I need it to. So that's where I left it. But I do need to replace the hoses at some point. Um, convertible top, hydraulic motor, serviced and repaired. Oh, I just went over that. Uh, the air conditioner stereo bezel repair. That's the one that was broken into three pieces because you have the top vents for the air conditioners right between the driver and the passenger. Then you've got the uh, air conditioner controls. Then you've got the tape player. Then you got the CD player. And that bezel was just... I had to even fabricate a piece for it while it was on my table in here behind me. I used this as a damn workshop. That Jeff Foxworthy joke where he's talking about you might be a redneck if you've ever had to say, honey, come move this transmission so I can take a bath. It was practically that bad. Not quite that bad. It was all in my studio. But it, I, the studio looked bad for a while because I was just repairing windows and body parts and interior panels and shit. It was terrible. So anyway. Um, instrument gauge bezel repaired and repainted. Um... I repainted them all black. Anything that I repaired and or replaced on the interior, I, I repainted black because there's there's a, a Cobra paint scheme or interior scheme for these cars that's like a two-tone beige and parchment and a black. And so I knew that was a thing, and I'm like, well, I'd rather have the black anyway because it doesn't show gunk and shit. So when I had to replace the door inserts with the window and the door lock, uh, that whole thing, those panels... The passenger side was fine, but the driver's side was fucked, so I just went and bought them as a pair and replaced both of them, and I've got the passenger side put up. Funny thing, when I, uh, as it comes out, uh, your your whole, all of your window um, controls for all four windows, because it still has your front two and then your rear quarters on there, and the window lock switch and the door lock, those all come out as one unit from, oh, sorry, from that panel. But then your your rear view mirror 
switch that you can switch to the left and change your driver's side, switch to the right and change your, you know, the electronic control for that. I had taken it out to repair that piece, but then when I found found them online cheap, I went ahead and bought them after I'd repaired them and I was getting ready to put them back in. And I accidentally, and I never do this, but I accidentally threw, once I got that panel in, I threw it away and it had the damn defrost, or not the defrost, but the uh, rear view mirror uh, control switch in it. Those motherfuckers are $160 plus online. Luckily, my local LKQ, I'm going to put a plug in for these guys, LKQ came through. It's like four bucks. Fucking save the day, man. I was pissed. And I went in there at the last minute. It was like uh, the day before Thanksgiving. Like they were closing at like four or something. And I walked in there, you know, and paid my three bucks to walk the yard. They gave me a list of the cars. And I went through the cars and found it and got that bitch out in like five minutes. Got up, paid my four and a half, five bucks. Got out, saved me 155 bucks. Thanks, guys. LKQ rocks. Support LKQ. They're good. They're a pick apart place. You go outside, find your model, and get your shit. It's awesome. So, anyway, that was an amusing thing. Uh, anyway. That was a really long thing. Uh, rear factory speaker grills replaced. I told you about that with them welding it on. Um, plasto welding, you know. I hot glued mine in, mainly because if, I, if I'm if i going to get in a position where I'm going to have to replace them later, I want the option. So I hot glued them in and didn't permanently put them in so that if I replace those panels, which I think I'm probably going to at least replace the driver's side, a lot of the little things, uh, the guides and the clips that are used to attach that, are not really in there anymore. They broke like a motherfucker. And it wasn't me that did it. It just happened. Um, so, I'm glad I did it that way. I may end up doing that. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, new door and window insert panel housings. That's where I was telling you where the, the window uh, controls and stuff were in the doors. Got those uh, replaced. New two-piece convertible top installed. Now, the convertible top for these things from the factory is two-piece. The window part goes in and is attached and stapled to to the last bow, the fourth frame bow, and also stapled to the trim sticks in the back. There are three trim sticks, and they're at a weird-ass angle. And the one that I took off was so fucked that I couldn't get get the pattern. I had to cut it out, and I couldn't get a good pattern for it. I got my top from convertibletopsdirect.com, I think is the name of them. Convertible Auto Tops or Convertible Tops Direct. Autotopsdirect.com. Fuck them and their mothers. Fuck them so hard that their fucking ancestors feel it. There were no instructions. And I went in the after reading some of the reviews. It was cheap. But it still had the defrost glass. The actual auto glass in the back window. And I fucking went on and... And uh, sent them. I sent them a request because the link that they had for the instructions was broken. And I tried numerous times to do it. And I emailed them, "Hey guys, I'm gonna. I just purchased this top. This is the order number. Uh, but the P, the the uh, link to the PDF was busted as fuck. Could you guys do me a favor and send me the PDF or at least send me a working link? Thanks. Did that twice through one email uh, address." Another one through almost like an emergency, hey, you guys fucked up email address, and then called them and was still not able to get it. Fuck them. Autotops Direct. Fuck them. And it didn't come with any instructions. No fucking surprise. So I had to do the shit. Um, there was a guy, and I can't remember, Mecca, M-E-C-A. Uh, if you look up a 99-04 Mustang convertible top install, Mecca is a, a, a Latino dude, probably out in California, I think. It was a California tag. Thank, thankfully for him, I not for him, but thankfully because of him, I was able to at least get the damn thing on the car. And I had a lot of adjusting to do, and it was a pain in the ass, and it took me a week just to get that doable, livable. Uh, it still needs tweaking, and that's something that at least I've got, you know, something that'll keep me dry. Uh, if it weren't for that dude, though, I'd have been severely fucked. So fuck Auto Tops Direct for that shit. Um, but anyway, it's the the window piece goes in and it's it goes it gets stapled onto the top and the trim piece is in the back and then the whole top goes on over that like a rain fly, right? So you you there's the window that you put in and boom, this kind of goes over that and overlaps it a little bit, right? And then attaches also to the trim stick that you've already stapled that shit to the window to. 
and now that staples to it, and then you staple it also to the frame bow on the fourth, and then uh, attach it with the headliner to a middle bow, and then finally lap it over to the front bow to the header bow. And then I re- so fuck yeah did that pain in the ass. It's not perfect, but it's better. Shit, it's hot in here. Oof, Jesus. Oh, it's almost 80 degrees in here. Apparently the thermostat's not working on that damn heater. So anyway. Mm, new piece, new two-piece convertible top installed. Driver's side window guide repaired. Twice. And then, after I repaired the guide, oh, I'll go into that later. Shit. This, this is going to be a long-ass video, guys. Sorry, but people need to know this shit before you get in, before you get into something with a new edge. You need to know some of the shit. If you got any questions, uh, get a hold of me on YouTube. Just you know, I'll help you if I can. I'll send you emails, whatever I got to. I found a, I found a lot of the shit that I did to repair this car online, and it's on there. But you got to dig. Um, I'll see if I can't find some of the stuff and gradually start putting them in the comments so that you guys can find them because this was invaluable information for me. Uh, and then drivers, driver passenger windows adjusted. We'll get back to that too. New factory replacement speakers installed with the boom mat. Now boom, the boom mat baffles. They're basically just this this foam uh, enclosure that you just put your speaker on, and you put that in the hole for the speaker. And now you've got this this enclosure right where you wouldn't have had one before, and it made a huge difference in the sound of the system. Not only the head unit, but those. So, I would highly recommend using boom mats. Um, so anyway, that that's cool. Boom mat baffles are really fucking cool, and they create this. And I once you put the wire through, I siliconed it shut so that it's sealed and everything. It's they sound clean. They sound really clean, guys. Something to be said for five by seven sounding that clean. Uh, new digital media receiver wired for direct installs before I actually put it in. Now I had it was a thirty dollars for a wiring harness for this car, and you can actually find. The uh, the wiring diagram, I actually found one for this vehicle, matching the wire colors. This was a Ford Premium sound system that had its own amplifier, and I saw the amplifier down there uh, when I took the tape player out, between the tape player and the CD player, right? So, I was able to basically use the RCA outputs on the uh, on the head unit that I bought, and plug it directly into the amplifier. Now I had to have a wiring harness that was thirty bucks for that wiring harness, but it that that kept me from having to run wires, speaker wires from the head unit to the speakers. They were already run in the factory amplifier. Now if that thing goes tits up, I'm gonna have some issues. But as of right now, the Ford Premium sound system amplifier is working and working fine. Uh, the head units usually have a uh, bass limiter. But the amplifiers do not. They are just a, they push power. It's just a straight up amplifier. It pushes full range. So mine's got a crossover network on it built in. I'm using that to the utmost extent to get the the, the best out of it. So anyway, uh, new rear brake rotors and pads installed. That's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, new driver rear caliper installed and brake system bled. Now I had to take that to a, I took it to a budget brakes near me. Uh, and this one was not rated very highly, but they were able to, the, apparently this, this ABS system and ABS systems, I can bleed brakes, guys. I know how to do this. I am, I'm a lot of things, uh, and a mechanic's one of them. I work on cars. That's why I decided to take on this project. This thing has ABS and the, the nooks and crannies in this ABS system are so numerous that you have to get somebody with a pump to hook up to the ABS system. To make sure you have no air in it. I thought I had air in it. Come to find out there was a shitload of trash. They originally, they called me like an hour or two after I dropped it off. And they're like, man, this this master cylinder shot. We're going to have to get a new one. It's going to cost you like five, six hundred bucks. I was like, well, fuck it. It's already there. And I can't do it myself if I can't bleed the ABS system. So they kind of had me by the short hairs. So I was like, all right, go ahead and do it. Then they called me back later when uh, 
we were already out with the family, uh, going to different shops and doing stuff. And they were like, hey, so good news. Um, you didn't need a new master cylinder. Come to find out, there's just a lot of shit in your lines. So we got that all cleaned out and got it all bled. And everything's working just fine with your brake lines. And your rear right brake line, your passenger rear brake line was broken. I know when that happened. I was the one that did it. I was I didn't try to do it, but I had the caliper up and I didn't secure it. And it jerked on the, the hose when it dropped and fucked it up and caused a leak. So I knew once he said that, I was like, fuck, yeah, I know when that happened. Fine. So the guys were great to me. They bled my ABS system. Um, it was great. I got it bled enough to get me there, and that was about it. They took care of the rest, and the guys did fantastic. So, um, New battery installed. Because the battery, the guy, and the guy even told me when I bought the thing, he's like, that battery is kind of suspect. You might want to change it. So I did. Um... So now, since then, what have I done? Well, um, so the creaking in the rear end, come to find out, that was, in a limited slip differential, you have to have friction modifier. And what this stuff does is there are these little clutch discs that tend to slip a little bit under, under normal operation on low speeds, and you can wear them out real quick. Because the... Something about the viscosity, the way, the, the slipperiness, not necessarily the viscosity, but the slipperiness, not the thickness, it's the slipperiness of the the actual 75W140 synthetic gear oil is it's not quite right for that. So you have to put a, in a four ounces of friction modifier per differential, per the whole thing, when you fill it. And that will take care of the chattering noise that you get from the limited slip. I never had a limited slip before, at least not to my knowledge. I had a Mustang before, but it didn't have a problem. So maybe, maybe it maybe it has a had the uh, had something different in it. I don't know. It was a seven and a half that I had, not the not the eight point eight, because it was a Fox body Mustang. Um, so that was a thing, and I got that put in, and I haven't had a problem with that since. But I haven't really worked it in. You're supposed to take it once you do that to a, like a parking lot or something, and do a lot of slow figure eights because it was on a slow turn to the left or right, real slow, like idling turn that it would creak and groan from the back, and that's that's what it was. I, I got that taken care of. Um, so what else did I run into? Um over the course of the whole bleh that I've taken care of. Um, well, I, I replaced both of the battery terminals and I ended up having to replace or uh, clean them again on the on the ground side. So there was that. Um, there was something I said I was going to go into more. Um, the bezel, refactory speaker grills. Eh. Okay, so the window, I ended up having to replace a regulator in the driver's side window because it just wasn't meeting up correctly. Um, and I also ended up having to repair the the front stop or the rear stop on the passenger side window that was pivoting from the rivet, just like I did the driver's side. So that's a common problem with these. And like I said, if I have problems out of these fuckers again, I'm just spending 200 bucks and I'm buying the new windows with the with the thing intact. And I'll sell these on fucking eBay and let somebody have that. I don't give a fuck. Um, Let's see, what else was there? Oh, yeah, so the new digital media receiver, and I talked about uh, the amp install, or not the amp install. Now, I will say with that, for the future, I'm probably going to try to find an 8-inch sub uh, that I can put in the back. Now, I've seen all these under-seat mount uh, amplifier and sub combos. It's just the whole thing, you know, and it's a lot of people say it sounds good. Uh, I don't want huge, earth-shattering bass, but these 5x7s are as good as they sound, they just don't have a, the bass response I want. I want a good, rich sound. Uh, so I may end up putting one of those underneath the passenger side, if it will fit. I'll have to do the measurements. Uh, if nothing else, I'm going to try to make my own stealth box uh, for one 8-inch sub in the back. That's all I want. Maybe 100, 150 watts, maybe 200 if I can't find anything less than that. 8-inch sub in the back. That's all I want. I don't want anything heavy. It doesn't need to be heavy. It doesn't need to be hardcore. just want a little bit. I don't want it to, to rattle the windows. I just want a good, nice, rich sound. So I may end up doing that. That's something for the future. Uh, the seat covers, again, as I said, that's going to have to be done. Either that or complete seat replacement. I don't have the money for a seat replacement right now. So that's going to end up having to, to, be, to be done. Um, the panels that I repaired, the instrument gauge bezel and the AC slash radio bezel, I repaired those. It wasn't a phenomenal job. It's doable. It was structural. It works. 
So I'll keep my eye out on, at LKQ in town uh, for some more New Edge and SN95 Mustangs that I can take that part out of. I think that's going to be the thing. I also need to replace the the passenger side uh, air conditioner vent because it's all shot to shit. It's all broken and fucked up. So I got to get that replaced. I'm going to replace that with the black one because it's all the parchment and beige interior. And when I do that, I'm just going to replace the driver's side one too. That way I've got the black and tan thing going just like I wanted. The defrost things, like I said, are broke to shit, so I'm going to have to replace those too. I'm going to also make those black. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else on this thing that I just went through and I went, oh shit. Uh, the oxygen sensors. So I took those things out and I cleaned them in gasoline and put them back in. It's idling at about 510, 550 RPMs, maybe. Spo uh, that's a guess because uh, you, you have like, you know, a thousand. Yeah, 500 then a thousand. And there's like that much space and it's not quite to the halfway point. The halfway point would be 750. It's supposed to idle at 675. So it's definitely idling under the 750 mark. But I don't know how much that is. I definitely think it's idling low. It's definitely not idling at 600, I don't think. So, it's idling low. I took the um, oxygen sensors, the three that I could get to. The passenger front I couldn't get to. The thing, the upstream, was a pain in the ass. Like, I'd have to have it on a lift to even reach the damn thing. But the other three I were able to get out. I was able to get out, clean them with gasoline. Excuse me, if whistles, whistles dry, you can tell. <clears throat> ah. <clears throat> that help? Maybe. I don't know. Maybe I've been talking too long. I've been doing nothing but practicing. I haven't been really been talking that much, so that may be why my voice is going out. Uh, but anyway, I took the three out of the four out that I could get to, and I cleaned those. I uh, cleaned them, put them back in, no change. I also changed the throttle position sensor, not the throttle position, but the idle air control valve. Just went ahead and replaced that son of a bitch, too. Cleaned the throttle body. The MAF sensor and everything are gorgeously clean. They are, are immaculate. Um... Yeah, man. Uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything else in here that I've gone through uh, after this list happened. Uh, I don't think there is. I think that's about it. Uh, if I happen to come into anything, I'll let you know. But guys, that's what I've done. And that's it's taken me a month to get the hell. It's almost two months at this point. In another 11 days, 10 days, it'll be two months since I've had this car. Now it's drivable. I drove it yesterday. I didn't drive it all today because my wife was off work, so we took the charger. It's in the garage right now. I'm going to take the back seat and everything out to get to the uh, the quarter window adjustments. I'll see if I can adjust those. Literally like a car, like card stock. You know what I mean by card stock? Like a business card? That thickness of that card stock? Just a little bit. That's it. That's all I need. Just that little bit, and it will seal perfectly up against those the, the driver and passenger side windows. And I'm good for right now. Um, I had a rattling underneath that I thought was my catalytic converter losing its substrate, but it's not. Um, when the guy rebuilt the transmission, he put the exhaust back on. Apparently, something maybe got a little mangled or bent or something, and I've been under there. Nothing's horrible, but it's a little bit too close to something, and it's rattling when it does its lope because it's a V8. You know, when it does that, once it gets warm and low enough RPMs, it rattles a little bit. So I don't know what the fuck to do about that. I don't think there's anything I can do. Aside from bend it back into its original position, but I've got to find where it's hitting first. And I don't want to be up under that damn thing while it's running, because it's fucking hot as shit. So, anyway, that's where I'm at with it. Um, uh, I've still got probably another 300 or so miles before I need to go ahead and drain the uh, automatic transmission and replace the transmission fluid in it because after a rebuild you want to you know break it in for 500 to 1000 miles I haven't been being stupid with it I've gotten on it a couple of times but nothing I haven't floored it I've just been you know I've been okay with it um, and then I've got to tighten the uh, the oil pan gasket bolts too because after it starts to you know get colder and shrink a little bit and it's been on there and tightened a little bit you got to retorque them so that's a thing. And probably change the oil while I'm under there. Um, yeah, man. That's about as far as I can as far as I can say. I am gonna end up getting a four point six liter Mustang GT, probably a two valve, just the same as what I've got. Uh, short block. And then I'm gonna I'm gonna build the son of a bitch from the ground up. And I'm gonna make it the way I want it. Because there's it's in no need right now, but then I'll take my time and build it, and when it's ready and I have a couple of weeks to do it, I'm gonna do an engine swap. Um, and again, I'm going to try to bring it back to stock. I have no, no desire to, to make a, a beast out of it, but 
I mean, if I'm going to rebuild the damn thing, I'm going to rebuild it the way I want. I'm going to make it badass. So that's going to be a thing. Uh, so anyway, this was a this was an op-ed on the 99 to 04 Mustangs, of which I do own one now. It's been almost two months. I will say, after all of that shit, I love my car. It rides like a fucking buckboard, man. It's, it's not a comfortable ride. You know, it's not particularly fast because everything's stock in it. Um, and I may address that later, and I'll do a couple of things. I may post some pictures and stuff of it uh, at some point to let you guys know what's up. But that's, I mean, that's it, guys. Um, that's what I'm looking at. So, uh, yeah, hey, thanks for humoring me, uh, those that tuned in. If you're a Mustang owner and uh, you're, you're tuning in because you wanted to know what was going on, um... Hopefully my, my attention grabbing, hey, come look at this thing, was enough. If you got any questions, if you're having issues, and it's something that I've run across that I kind of covered in this and you need some help, let me know, guys. I'll do what I can to help you, I swear. I'll point you in the right direction because I know it was frustrating as shit for me when I started this project and having to, uh, had all these problems, and I'm like, what the fuck? It's Ford, man. They f fuck things up. Luckily, the engine tranny are great in this car. Everything's working good. Uh, and it's, I'm just going to go on and up from here. So, hey, thanks for coming out. We'll catch you cats in the comments, and let's drive our cars. <laughs>